just to kind of wrap it up and to challenge you to kind of take some action, here's some, you know, kind of additional ideas for you. So if I wanted to increase movement time in my setting, okay, what could I do? Well, if I was in a school setting, think about the instant activity time. Think about, yeah, a lot of times education, we kind of waste a lot of time getting started with instruction. But what if students could come into my space and there was an instant activity set up for them and they were involved in movement, getting them a little bit more primed and engaged and, and ready uh, to learn, um, you know, and can I take some of that same concepts and ideas and apply them with adults, maybe at a faculty meeting? And I think that's one of the most powerful things because you're always going to have folks that are like, yeah, again, I don't have time, Sean. I've got a lot of other things to do. But if they came into a faculty meeting, there was an instant activity for them to do. And it was simple. They had the opportunity to interact with their colleagues. Um, they had the chance to, you know, develop some communication with some folks they may not or may not work with on a regular basis. You know, how powerful was that, would that be? And how much more as an administrator would I get out of that faculty meeting, having those adults that are sitting there that are now have had that opportunity to, to interact and develop that more sense of a, a belonging and, and camaraderie and, and teamwork. Um, you know, anytime that I get the chance to, you know, build in more movement, maybe it's a classroom transition. If I think about this as an educator, you know, it's so powerful for me to model those positive behaviors around physical activity. Can I participate with the kids? Can I do the instant activity with them? Maybe it's a school-wide physical activity break that at a certain time of the day, someone comes over the, the intercom and everyone stops and it's a, it's a school-wide movement break. You know, getting students involved, you know, getting their voice and their choice is certainly very powerful. This is probably, these have been on our website for many years. And again, I'll share the link. And it, they're just physical, simple physical activity cards. And I actually borrowed the idea from a teacher and it was a middle school teacher. And she was actually having problems getting students uh, into her class on time. And she took pictures of her students doing these little simple physical activity movements. She posted them around the wall and then she had them, uh, come in the classroom and they were trying to complete as many laps around the physical activity circuit they could before she got ready to start instruction. And this was with middle school kids. And, you know, they would have a student post the number of laps that they got combined totally uh, from a class. And then that was first period. Second period, kids were literally running down the hall and they would look up on the board and they'd say, gosh, they got, you know, 14 combined laps with all the kids in class. You know, can we beat that? So again, but I could use these at a faculty meeting. I could pass these out uh, to teachers as they walked in. You start some music, they switch cars, the music stops, whatever card that they're holding, they have to do that activity for four or five seconds. And again, you know, you don't need an actual basketball to, to shoot five jump shots or throw three touchdown passes or to jump rope. And then we even have some cards that have some multiplication problems with, with physical activity. So, you know, what are the next steps? Um, you know, overall, I think create that vision of success. So whatever, you know, my reasoning is for, for being involved in this space, you know, what is that vision of success? What do I want it to look like? Have that plan, but I just, you know, caution you to start small. Maybe it's, it's you know, I'm an administrator and I really want to get, you know, more physical activity going um, in my school. I'm going to start with one teacher, one classroom, get someone on board that has that same value and belief that, yeah, physical activity can really foster belonging amongst students. Um, maybe, again, I'm trying to get my colleagues um, to develop that sense of teamwork and cooperation. Can I start with one small activity, one faculty meeting, and then utilize some resources with them and let them start making the connections for themselves? Yeah, I, I felt pretty good doing that. And it was really easy. You know, a great place to start is to check your local wellness policy. What's in there? What does it say uh, about staff involvement, about student physical activity? Think about that. What, where is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? Uh, is goal setting a component of it? Can I track some progress? Because I think that's so important. We, we don't really know where we're going if, if we don't know where we are. So how can I track my progress? And then again, don't forget to, to communicate out, you know, those small wins, those successes. And, you know, 
I'll talk about America's healthiest schools in just a minute. But, you know, that communication to me is so important because it's really to highlight the good things with physical activity, because oftentimes we see things that may not be positive around physical activity, or we don't get the opportunity to really promote that, hey, there is a connection here with the physical component and that mental component, the social component. There's a lot more to it than just the physical benefits that there's so much more for young people and for adults as well. So just to get kind of your feedback, um, you know, which strategy really resonated with you? If you had to pick something to go back to your site and to work on, would it be that environment piece of it? Do we really need to take a look at what you have available, maybe do some resource mapping? Or is it the relationship piece of it? Maybe we need to, um, you know, do something to kind of deepen those relationships and bring in some activities that get folks to move along that continuum to where they're more engaged. Or is it the voice choice component of it? Maybe it's, gosh, there is some opportunity to connect and collect more feedback, uh, to incorporate more ideas and to give folks a choice. And I've got to be a little bit more intentional about it, about building that in. Um, yeah, environment. And my favorite part of this activity for myself is that, gosh, I could, you know, something here, you know, resonated with someone that, you know, that we all saw value in those three different strategies and see the opportunity um, to build upon that. So it's just kind of wrap it up here. I just want you to, you know, look at that grouping of letters. And if I were to ask you, you know, what do you see? Okay. Where do you put the spaces at? Okay. And you could type in the chat if you don't mind. What what do you see and where do you put the spaces at when you um, see that group of letters? Yeah, it could be could be opportunity is now here. Yeah, thank you, uh, Natalie and Sharman. Thank you for um, seeing that. Um, but it also could be opportunity is nowhere, right? So hopefully that you see that opportunity is now here. Um, I was telling Miriam, I was working with a school district in Minnesota and um, they saw that slide. And the first thing that they pulled out of it was snow. Um, so I guess it all depends on, on your environment and where you're at. But, you know, I, again, appreciate uh, being involved. This is my email address. If you want any additional information or feel free to shoot me an email to connect and, and to kind of share with you some additional thoughts and some additional ideas on, on building out some uh, strategies. Um, you know, I mentioned to you that I was going to uh, talk about America's healthiest schools because that's our, you know, again, with our great uh, partnership with, with Kaiser, um, the opportunity for schools to be recognized in one of the nine areas of whole child health. And as the person that works in our physical education and physical activity space, you know, I'm uh, like to say that, this is our most awarded and applied for topic area is the physical education, physical activity space. Um, so we're hoping to increase that across all areas. But again, as the person that reviews those, you know, 700 or so applications that came in last year, um, yeah, I like to say that, you know, we have a whole group of um, a captive audience out there around physical education, physical activity. So how can we continue to, to build off of that? And applications are due by April 16th, but you could scan that QR code and it takes you directly to that award page.